Hi, uh, my name is Itamar Turner Trowering, um, and I'm going to be talking about making your software faster, or one small part of it. But before I begin, I just wanted to remind you that if your software harms people or harms the environment, the more efficient your software is, the faster it is, the more effective it is, the more damage your software is doing. So before you start to make your software faster, even to write it, one of the things, the first thing to ask yourself is, should this software be written at all? So the rest of the talk, I'm assuming that you've made that decision. So let's say you have some software, and that software is too slow. So you're, you have a web server, and it can't handle the number of requests a second that needs to, or particular queries are too slow. Or maybe you have a batch process, and the batch process is taking far too long to run, and you want to make it faster. So what do you do? And the sort of simplest description of the process is you pick a tool that will help you measure where it's slow, where it's fast. You use that tool to figure out where the bottleneck is. And then once you know where the bottleneck is, then you can go and say, OK, I can fix it. I know what the problem is, and proceed. And so for the rest of this talk, because it's only 25 minutes, I'm going to be focusing just on the first step, which is picking the right tool. And so this talk is going to be about how you pick the right tool for figuring out your performance problem. And in particular, I'm going to be talking about three different tools. I'm going to be talking about the C profile, which is a Python profiler that's built into the Python standard library. Uh, it's a deterministic profiler, and I will explain as I go along what that means. I'll be talking about PyInstrument, which is a sampling profiler, and again, I'll explain what that means later on. And I'll be talking about Elliot, which is a logging library. And these are, in some sense, exemplars of these categories of tools. So there's multiple sampling profilers, and they tend to have similar strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and if we have time and I go really quickly, I might mention a few other tools. If not, uh, you'll be able to find them in the slides. And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to use each of these tools. I'm just going to try to just sort of give you a, a glimpse of how they work, because my main focus is in choosing the right tool for your particular problem. And the first tool I'm going to start with is C profile. Uh, and I'm starting with it because it's built into Python. It's part of the Python standard library. So it's available on every Python install. If you have Python, you have C profile available. And so you, you've probably, like, if you've done any performance stuff, you're very likely to encounter it. And the way it works is, and I will go into this in more detail, is it traces every function in your program. And that can have some problems, uh, which I'll be going into. And the thing it measures by default is process CPU, so how much computation time your process used. And whenever you're uh, choosing tools to measure performance, it's very important to figure out what it is that they're measuring, because different measures can expose different kinds of performance problems. So if you're measuring CPU, if you're measuring computation, you will not see kinds of slowness involved waiting for the network, waiting for the disk. So for example, in web applications, quite often the bottleneck isn't your uh, the computation you're doing in your web application, the bottleneck is in your database. And that's not going to show up in C profile at all by default, because C profile is only measuring computation in your code. So you always should be asking, what does this tool measure exactly? And I'm going to start with C profile, not only because it's built into the Python standard library, but also because you probably don't want to use it. And so I'm going to talk about the four different problems with it, and then some tools that solve different aspects of the, those problems. So the way you use C profile is pretty simple. Uh, if you have a program that usually would just run as Python benchmark.py, you can instead just do Python minus M C profile benchmark.py. It also has a Python API, so in a Python interpreter or a Jupyter notebook, you can profile just small parts of your code. Uh, so you don't have to do a full process. You can also just do more granular profiling. And what it outputs is a table that looks like this. And the table is basically one row for every function. And it gives you some pieces of information that I'll we'll discuss in just a second. But one thing to notice about this table is that it doesn't really tell you how these different function calls are related. It's telling you some information about each function, but you can't, there's no relationship between them. And that can be, make it harder for you to figure out which parts of your code are slow. You might say that this particular function is slow, but maybe it's called in two places. How do you know which one it is? You can't really tell from this output. And there are some tools that will give you better visualizations of C profiles. So if you do end up using, you should try out one of those tools. And 
The information it gives you is of two sorts. One is it can tell you how many times each function was called. So you can see that the underscore underscore call underscore underscore function in output.py was called 50,000 times. Uh, you can see that in this column over here. Uh, and in this particular case, it was called 50,000 times because this is a script that runs some very fast code in a loop. Uh, I want to run it multiple times just to average out the noise. Uh, and so that's why it's a whole number, because I'm like, running this function 10,000 times. Uh, but knowing that this function was called a, a very large number of times can be a hint that this part of the, your code might be doing, some, doing too much work than it should. Um, this might be a thing you want to look at. And the other thing you can see in the output is how much uh, CPU a particular function used. So you can see that this particular function used 0.5 CPU seconds if you include the functions that it called, or 0.064 only in its code. And again, I'm not going to go too much detail what this means. Uh, mostly, you can just say, if this is really high, that means this function is uh, kind of slow, and you might want to look at it and debug it. Uh, the way it basically works is every function in your process, every time it gets called, it's going to, before it starts, measure how much CPU time your process has used so far. And then when the function returns or throws an exception, it will measure how much CPU time has been used at that point. And the difference between the two is how much time has elapsed. So maybe before you ran this function and used two CPU seconds, when it was done in three CPU seconds, and so the elapsed time, this function spent one CPU second out of however many seconds your program took altogether. And so every time a function is called in your program, it's going to do this measurement. And so that's going to basically mean a bunch of overhead. And that overhead causes our first problem. So if you just run this program on its own, uh, it can process 7,800 messages a second, more or less. If you run it under C profile, it can only do 5,200 a uh, second. So that's a pretty, like, it slowed down your program. And so that can, it can be, take you longer. To, if it's a program that takes 10 minutes to run, now, now it's going to take you 15 minutes to get the profiling results. And what's worse, the overhead, the um, extra amount of time it takes that slows things down, isn't uniform across your program. It's tied to how many Python functions get called. So you'll recall the way it works is before and after the program, your, each function runs, it does a little bit of extra work. So if you have a piece of code that, if, if you have a part of your code that has lots of function calls, it will have more overhead. If you have a part of your code that has less function calls, or less, o, less overhead. So it's not that the 5,200 messages is just that your whole program slowed down. Parts of your program slowed down. Parts of your program didn't. And so the results that it gives you can be not as accurate as you would like. And so you can't always, in all cases, trust the result of C profile. And there's some, there, there's some ways you get around this, but it's not ideal. The second problem is that C profile gives you too much information. It is profiling every single function that gets called as your program runs. And that's why it's a deterministic profiler, because it's, it's recording everything. And if you run the exact same inputs, the exact same code, you get the same output because it's looking at everything. And the problem with looking at everything is that most of the code that runs in your program probably isn't impacting performance at all. But it's still going to import this giant table for every single function in your source code, saying this function took almost no time. This function took almost no time. And interleave of that are the functions you care about, but you still have to do some work to sort through the noise. Uh, and if you are using C profile, by the way, you can uh, load its output into a spreadsheet, and that makes uh, sorting things a lot easier. But it's still like you have to do this extra work of filtering out all the things you don't actually care about. The third problem with C profile is that you probably only want to run it on your laptop. And often the performance problems you're going to get only happen in production environments. So only when you use the real data is your batch process slow. Only when you get real queries from real users on your web server, you get performance problems. But C profile isn't really going to help you in a pr production environment. If you're already dealing with the slowness, you don't want to be running your production server under this profiler that's going to make everything 30, 40, 50% slower. It's not realistic. And so you, you have this tool, but you can only use it on your laptop. Uh, and whatever's happening in production, it can't really help you with. Uh, 
And the fourth problem is that the output that you get from C profile tells you this particular function is slow, this particular function is fast. But in, in many cases, whether or not a function is slow depends on its input. So you can imagine a function that if you call it with 100, it runs really quickly. If you call it with zero, it runs slowly. Uh, maybe it's uh, algorithmic complexity, so it has to do a lot more work in some cases. Maybe it does a different database query, and so depending on the inputs, you get expensive database queries or slow database queries or fast ones. And so ideally, you know which inputs cause your code to be slow, and C profile can't tell you that. It just averages it all out and tells you this function, on average, is slow. And that can mean that figuring out what's causing the, the slowness can be hard because all you know is the function is slow. You don't know what particular inputs are the problem. So those are the four problems with C profile. And because of these problems, C profile is quite often not the profiler you want to use. And so I'm going to be talking about two different tools that solve different aspects of these problems. The first one is PyInstrument, uh, which solves the first two problems. And the second one is Elliott Logging Library, uh, which solves the second two problems. So we'll start with PyInstrument. And PyInstrument is a sampling profiler, and it solves the first two problems we saw with C profile. So it solves the problem we saw with high overhead and distorted results. And it also solves the second problem of having too much detail of lots of noise that's hiding your signal. And what uh, Pi instrument measures is elapsed wall clock time, just how many seconds pass in the real world. And so that means you're not assuming that it's computation that's slowing you down. If your program is slow because it's waiting on a network operation, like a database query, it'll record that. If your program is slow because it's waiting on a lock, it'll tell you that. If your program is slow because you have a sleep in there, it'll tell you that. And so it doesn't prejudge what the cause of the slowness is. It can measure any kinds of slowness because it's just a measuring elapsed time in the real world. And the way you use it is quite similar to the way you use C profile. You can run the script directly, or if you want to profile it, you can run the script using Python minus M Pi instrument. And if you look at the number of messages per second, uh, with C profile, we got 5,200 a second. With Pi instrument, it's 6,700 a second. So it does have some overhead. It's not magically free, but the overhead is lower. And, more, and even, more importantly, the overhead is also uniform. It's not tied to how many Python functions calls. So the, the overhead isn't going to distort the results the way C profile's overhead does. And like C profile, it has a Python API. So you can, in a Python interpreter, in a Jupyter notebook, load up some uh, code and like profile a particular function, a particular class. You don't have to profile a whole program. And the output it gives you is a tree of calls. And so we, immediately we see some, an improvement over C profile's default output. Because you can see that this function was called by this function, was called by this function, was called by this function, more or less. And so you can see the context of where your slow code is. You can, say, you can see that final write was slow when it was called well, this particular series of functions. And next to each function, it'll tell you how much time was elapsed. And again, that's time in seconds on the clock. It's not CPU, it's just elapsed time. And so you can see that this was 0 0.557 seconds out of the total of 1.5 seconds that your whole program ran. And so the tree view gives you a sort of a holistic view of where the time is going in your program. Uh, and you, you might have different, you might see the same function show up in different parts of the tree if it's being called in different code paths and you can sort of differentiate between them. And so to understand how Pi Instrument works, I'm going to use a uh, different domain, a cat. You have a cat. You want to know what your cat is spending its time on. And you could go and watch it for 24 hours a day, but that's a lot of effort, and also that might distort the cat's behavior a little bit because it might want to play with you and so on. And so what you're going to do is every five minutes you're going to peek your head into the room where the cat is and you're going to write down what you see it doing. And you're just going to do this every five minutes for, say, two, three days for a week. Uh, maybe you want to hire people to do it at night. Uh, and so you just write it down. So the first time you stick your head in, it's sleeping. And the second time you stick your head in, it's sleeping. And then it's eating. And you just record these series of samples of what it's doing. It's, you're not seeing everything it does. You're sampling it. 
And at the end of this, you can sort of summarize all the information you got. So you can say, of the samples that I observed of the cat, 90% of its time was sleeping, 10% eating, 9% using litter box, and 1% staring longingly at the window through a cat, through the window at a bird. Uh, and this is not everything your cat does. So maybe it spent three minutes out of these three days chasing its tail, and you didn't, ha didn't happen to look in at it. But from your perspective, you don't care about everything the cat did. What you want to do is find out what it spent most of its time doing. And so if it spent most of its time sleeping, then if you're checking often enough, and for long, if you're taking enough samples, then you would expect that most of the time, then when you observe it, it'll be sleeping if it actually was sleeping most of the time. So over time, the more samples you take and the more frequent you are, the closer this uh, distribution of behavior will be to the actual time spent. It's never exactly accurate, and, every, and if, you run, if you do the same thing multiple times, you might get slightly different distributions, but the, no, the more frequently you do it, the bigger sample will converge on telling you what the uh, bulk of the cat's time was spent doing. And so Pi instrument works similarly. Like every millisecond, it looks at your process and says, what is this process doing? What function is it calling? What does the call stack look like? And it just does this until it's done running. And so basically, you have a series of samples of what the of program is doing. And so part of, this is part of the reason why it doesn't have as much overhead. But also, if you have a function that only takes up like a minuscule fraction of, your, of its, the program's runtime, chances are your samples aren't going to observe it. Like if you've, all, you've, you've looked at the, the program 10,000 times and the function is only runs for a millionth of the time, you probably won't see that function. And that's a good thing because if it only ran for a millionth of the program's elapsed time, it's having no actual effect of, on performance. And so the sampling method basically filters out all the functions that don't really affect your performance and only shows you the functions that do affect performance. And so you have much more signal and less noise. And so that's Pi instrument. And Pi instrument, you'll recall, only solved the first two problems we saw with C profile. The other tool I'd like to talk about is Elliot, which is a logging library. And Elliot can help you solve the other two problems we saw with C profile. It can be used in production. It's a logging library. You can write logs to disk in your in, in production environment. In fact, you want to. And unlike uh, these profilers we've been seeing so far, it can actually tell you which arguments cause a particular function to be slow with some limitations. I'm talking about Elliot as a logging library uh, for two reasons. One is I wrote it, so I'm prejudiced and think it's a good thing. But the second reason is that you'll see that the way it works is in many ways fundamentally different than most logging libraries. And so the kind of information it gives you is much more suitable for getting performance information. But if you don't want to use it, you can, with some work, get similar information out of uh, any logging library you want to use. So for example, the Python standard library logging library. So here's an example of a program. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, I just wanted to fit in a slide. We have a function that adds two numbers. We have a function that multiplies two numbers. And then we have a function that takes three inputs, takes two of them, adds them, multiplies them the third number. And then we call it with three inputs. So we're going to do a 1 plus 2 times 4, which should come to 12. And we're going to make changes code to add some logging to it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to say we want to write the logs to a file called outs.log sort of a standard thing. You tell your logging library where to write its logs. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to add decorators to the functions we care about from Elliot. And Elliot has other APIs that are more sophisticated. This is simplest API, but for our purposes, it's sufficient. And again, it's easy to fit in a slide. And what log calls is going to do is it's going to record the inputs to your function call, and it's going to re rec uh, record the return result from your function, or an exception if it's an exception. And it's going to do so in an interesting way. So we're going to run our program, and we've got a result, which is 12, what we expect. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12. And also wrote out an out.log log file. And we're going to run that through a prog program called Elliot Tree, which visualizes the logs. And what you'll notice here is that unlike most logging systems, which are a series of individual statements, Elliot can give you a tree of what happened in your program. So you had multiply sum. And it was called with this, these inputs, 1, 2, and 4. And the elapsed time was 10 seconds. And all the way at the bottom, you can see the result of multiply sum. 
And so we, basically, the fundamental model of Eliot is actions. You have a tree of actions, and each action starts and actions begin. So an action might be adding, multiplying. And because it has a concept of starting and ending, things like performance are just automatically recorded. You can just see the elapsed time of an action. And you can also see the arguments that a function or a higher level action were called with. So we can see that of these 10 seconds, the bulk of them were in the multiply function. It took nine seconds. And the two inputs to the multiply function are three and four. And so for some reason, with these inputs, this function is really slow. And so not only do we know that this function is something we should look at, we also know what inputs we, should, we can look into that might be causing the slowness. And this output, by the way, is not the actual output from Elliot Tree. I had to condense a lot of it to fit on the slide, but this is the gist of the information you'll get. And so you can get information out of your logs that you can't get other ways, but it does have some limitations. So the first limitation is logging is something you have to add to your code in advance. With a profiler, you can just say, I'm going to run this program or this function and profile it. And the profiler doesn't need to be, pre you don't have to prepare anything for the profiler. It'll just run the program and profile it for you. With logging, it's code you have to write, add to your program. And so in advance, you have to go and add logging uh, messages, if it's a standard logging library, actions, if it's Elliot, you have to go and add it. And if you didn't add logging information, you are not going to know anything about that part of the program. With Elliot, it's a little bit better because the concept of actions means even if you didn't, within that code, uh, put any logging, unless you have the concept of the action starting and ending, but still, you're not going to have information everywhere. And you might want to add logging everywhere, but adding all this logging has overhead. It has performance overhead. If you added logging to every single uh, Python function call, you actually have higher overhead than C profile. So you have this sort of inherent limits that you can't log everything your program does. And so you have to spend some time thinking about, is it worth doing logging here? Is it worth lo doing logging here? And so you, it, it's not going to solve all of your problems in terms of understanding what your program did. So those were the three programs we're going to talk about, C Profile, Pi Instrument, and Elliot. And so the next question is, when should you use each of these tools? And my sort of first pass answer, and this is a heuristic, it's not, not always true, but as a heuristic, if you're writing software, you should always have logging. So you, just as a starting point, anything that's a non-trivial program, you should do at least a little bit of logging. The more complex it is, the more logging you're going to want. If the next step is to add use Pi Instrument, and if that's not sufficient, C Profile can be useful uh, be, for because you can uh, create custom profilers with it, and we'll talk about that in a second. So the first step is any sort of complex problem you want to add logging, not just for performance reasons, but just because it can help you catch bugs. Like you 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 want to know. Was there an exception? What was your program doing? It's just a generally useful thing to have for anything software that you're running. And so if you're already adding it, you may as well add it in a way that can help you track down performance problems. So by logging inputs uh, and outputs and having some concept of elapsed time and actions. And sometimes that'll be enough for you to figure out the performance problem. If it's not, the tool you should use is probably something like a Pi Instrument or some other sampling profiler. They measure wall clock time, so it doesn't prejudice you towards computational slowness. It can also catch things like you're spending a lot of time waiting for a database. And the overhead is, is relatively low and not going to distort the results. And finally, if you can't figure out the problem or you need some custom metric, the interesting thing about C profile is, by default, it measures process CPU, but you can actually customize the metric that uses for profiling. Any function that goes up over time, you can plug into C profile. So you can, for example, calculate how much time your program spent waiting for things that aren't calculation and profile that. Um, and there's an article I wrote about that. So if you go to the slides, you can read more about it. But if you ever th find yourself thinking, I wish I could write a profile that measured this thing, C profile is a good starting point because you can plug in your own cost metrics very easily and just use all of its infrastructure to profile code. And there's a couple more tools I'm going to not skip over because we're out of time. Um, 
But if you go to the slides, which are at pythonspeed.com slash pygotham19, uh, there's links to the slides, and the slides have links to a few more tools. And if you uh, enjoyed this talk, I provide training. And so if you'd like to upgrade your team's skills, uh, learn more about Python performance, other things, uh, you should be in touch. And if you have, I believe I have no more time for questions. So if you'd like to talk to me afterwards, uh, I'll be right outside. Thank you.